recording. Okay, recording has started. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, the May 24th uh, storage special interest group for Kubernetes meeting. Uh, remember, this meeting is recorded and public, so watch what you say. Uh, let's run through our agenda. I'll start with a planning spreadsheet and then uh, we'll go through any design reviews or any PRs that people want to talk about. So I'm going to step through this on the features, just kind of get a status update from people. Uh, the first one, make dynamic provisioning topology aware. Um, so we have, <clears throat> we there are three PRs out for this one. Um, that all sort of depend on each other. The first one um, just got all the approvals today. Um, so that should be going in. Um, after the first one is in, then the remaining ones are related to the new um, API updates. Um, we will try to uh, we'll try to squeeze those in if we can. Um, if not, it's not a big deal. Okay, sounds like we're in good shape on that. All right, next one, Kubernetes CSI topology implementation. Um, this is actually more of a design item for this quarter. Um, there were no, we did not plan on doing any implementation stuff. Okay. Uh, CSI topology support. Um, Saad is working on this. I think he uh, just had another meeting with CSI folks to discuss this. Yes, I was there. I would say that it's not, it's not, I wouldn't say that it's green for CSI. It seemed like there was a lot of discussion around this. Yeah, still like yellowish. Okay, GCE PD topology integration. Um, so <clears throat> Deep has been working on uh, both the GCE PD and AWS parts of this. Um, right now, he's looking at making some changes to the existing admission controllers to um, put the uh, to add the PV node affinity by default to um, new PV objects. So a PR is out for that, and um, we are reviewing. And that's probably the most we are going to be able to get in for 111. There's still a ton of other um, topology integration items um, that we have to tackle on 112. Okay, so I can list this as started at least, correct? Yeah. Okay. And that's probably the same status for the AWS CBS topology? Yeah, it's the same change. Okay. Uh, local volume dynamic provisioning. This is being done on um, external storage repo. Um, so a PR is out for this, but we haven't, I haven't been reviewing it yet because I've been focusing on the um, entry PRs. Okay. Fine. Uh, add support for volume expansion and CSI. Uh, I think uh, we will have to kind of fund it for the next release. We have a PR for CSI up, but it's not merged and there might be still discussions going on there. So, yeah. <clears throat> Come on, you mean just the CSI part, right? Yeah, and obviously we need the Kubernetes part as well to be done on the controller and we have to make uh, plugin changes in the CSI entry plugin in Kubernetes, like the interface changes. So just like we had to first get the CSI plugin merged then make the entry changes. And I don't think we'll be able to do this in 1.11, both the stuff. All right. Add support for volume expansion and CSI, that's the same status, correct? Yeah, oh, sorry, yeah. So two items, I didn't see that. Oh wait, so the first, I'm sorry, the first one was online volume expansion. 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That's a PR uh, out for review. Jan has reviewed it. I has reviewed it. We just I've tested it. Yogesh is writing some E2E test for it. He has already written it. So uh, it just I think we need LGTM by today or maybe tomorrow, and we should be ready too much. But it's been tested, and yeah. Okay. So it's been reviewed. We just need the LGTM on that. Uh, Jan had some comments today morning, so the the author needs to update, like respond to those comments. I will, yeah, that's the thing. So he works in from uh, he or she works from in uh, different time zones, so there's that. But yeah. Okay. Uh, volume snap restore design. Uh, so yeah, we do have a design, and just need to present that to. You. Sick architecture um, should be soon. I think we're planning to do that today. I need to check with the gene. Um, and uh, the next one is uh, CSI. So that spec was merged last week. Okay. Uh, that's okay. So there's your CSI update on this. The spec just merged, right? Yes, we just merged it last week. Oh, this one. Okay, so even though the specs merged, we still need to do the functional piece of this in CSI. Yes. Like, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. The coding. Yeah. So the coding is uh, in progress. Yeah. Okay. Oops, what did I do This item right here is blank. What did I delete? This is probably the implementation for CSI. Uh, which one? Snapshot? You're asking uh, me no, uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. No, snapshot support entry. So that's the. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that yeah, that is also uh, that's a work in progress. Yeah. Snapshot entry. And you said this one was still in progress? It is working in progress, yeah. So I will submit a PR soon. Okay. Uh, dynamic max volume for node count. Yeah, there's a PR open, and uh, like the CSI proposal was most. Mm, so the PR is open. And for CSI, uh, I think. Uh, we need to cut point three release. I'm writing code to CSI implementation for CSI implementation for same thing. But I think these two pieces will go as separate PRs. Like the CSI PR, I would like to keep it as separate. Like the volume uh, count thing for CSI will be separate PR. But, uh, but and for entry plugins, there's already PR open. So yeah. Okay. Okay, so there's that one, uh, PV health monitoring. We have not had representation on this one. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at this one. Um, I can, I will try to look at it for next release. Okay, so this one, I think it's the official not started. Block volume support to beta. 
Aaron, is your team working on this one? You guys, I believe, are not working on this, this release, is that correct? The block going to beta? Yeah. Um, I thought you guys were doing that. I thought we talked about this yesterday. Yes, and we have not started this. Okay. Actually, uh, I'm starting to uh, expand E2E testing for block volume support by referencing local volume testing. And uh, I will discuss about it once I'm ready to. Okay, so realistically, what do we think we can get done by um, the code freeze time for moving this to beta? Do we want to punt on actually moving this to beta or? Yeah. I, 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 You know, um, Vlad has a PR out uh, refactoring the existing code uh, to make it more compatible with CSI. And um, there's PRs going out to enable this in CSI. Um, but I'm not sure like, if, if the work hasn't begun to move the core API to beta, whether uh, that's something we should try to rush in at the last minute or. I don't see us getting this in at the last minute, to be honest. It hasn't even been started yet. Yeah. Okay. There's also one uh, one uh, feature request I have for this, so um, hmm. I'm gonna work on a proposal soon. So let's say that um, we're going to delay this till next quarter to make sure we get it right. And for this quarter, let's focus on uh, getting CSI support in. Uh, I think there's already PRs in flight for that. And then next quarter, we can move it all to beta. I think also there are, it, it would be good this quarter if uh, to get in more tests on this. Mm. I think right now only the local volume plugin is testing this. Um, I think there are a couple other, I think there are some other tests, but they are, there's no reason why we can't get more in and still have it a little more robust. Was it Deep that was working on the tests? Was that who was speaking earlier? Who, who mentioned they were working on block storage tests as part of some other work? I, uh, M. Kimura is working on it. Hmm. Who was that? I'm sorry. Uh, M. Kimura. How do you spell that? Yeah, he's in the last office, so we, uh, we are working together with uh, the last class of tests. All right, the CSI block volume support. Uh, Vlad, I believe you were working on this. Yeah, so as Saad mentioned, there, um, there's a prerequisite PR out there. And um, I just got a ping from M. Kumura. He's going to look at, at that. And this work is being done against the, the block API to allow uh, a little bit more flexibility for the downstream implementation of the block API, thus allowing CSI to be um, to be implemented. So that PR is in flight right now and, and being reviewed. And then I have another PR coming up um, to do the actual, uh, to finish up the actual implementation based on that previous PR. So those two are going on right now. Okay. So this is still in progress and healthy, it sounds like. Uh, yeah. As of right now, it is. If I get, a, if I get that prerequisite PR approved, um, then that would be a good thing. And I can concentrate on and finish up. The, uh, the other PR. But I, I kind of agree. I think we, we need a, a lot of testing on this stuff. It makes me nervous a little bit. Um, so, Michelle, your feature you want to get in on it, is that going to have effects on the Sorry, can you repeat that? So, the so suggest this I don't know why my. Can you please mute if you're uh, not talking? Um, the change you were requesting for block, is that going to affect possibly something in CSI? Should we hold off? I don't, you mentioned you wanted to get something in. Um, I don't think that's going to uh, 
um, change anything in CSI. I think the stuff um, that I'm thinking about is going to affect some of the internal um, internal plumbings of how the the feature is implemented on Kubelet and also PB controller. Okay, just making sure since you know we're figuring it out now, I didn't want to miss it. So thanks. Okay, so prepare CSI for GA in Q3. So I'm so uh, there's a bunch of different items that went under this. Uh, one of the, to the two big items that we're tracking for this quarter are moving CSI to block, which is on track thanks to Vlad. The second big item uh, that we wanted to get in was uh, driver plugin uh, registration with Kubelet. Uh, we want to have a standard mechanism by which the CSI plugins are registered uh, so that there's a discovery mechanism for Kubelet. Um, we found out that this is actually even more important than we thought because one of the other uh, tasks this quarter was to move the logic uh, that's currently in one of the sidecar containers, the driver registrar, to modify the node object. We want to move that into Kubelet for security reasons. Uh, unfortunately, that work is blocked on, on this plugin registry. Uh, the plugin registry stuff is also something that Vlad's helping drive. Um, so those two projects are looking good. Uh, the driver registrar uh, work is going to have to wait until uh, we uh, have this plugin registry. So we're going to tackle that next quarter if we can get this driver registry stuff done this quarter. Uh, and then topology was another big feature that we wanted to get in this quarter. Um, the CSI uh, uh, spec has a PR open against it. There's uh, ongoing discussion on that. It's probably going to get in, but the wiring between Kubernetes and CSI is probably not going to go in this quarter. It would go in next quarter. Um, so uh, work in progress, um, probably not going to hit 100% of the goals that we set for this quarter, uh, but work in progress. Okay, cool. So next up, we have design migration story for entry plugins to CSI. Uh, I know Jan had give, given some feedback on this. David, is this still in good progress? So we uh, decided to move volume resizing out of this quarter for CSI, uh, at least not part of the 0 0.3 release. Um, we did get volume uh, attachment limits in, uh, but for resize, we'll just punt that to the next quarter. Okay, well, this this was the migration story for entry plugins to CSI. Is that same status? This was um, like a proposal on how they were going to do the you know the flags for enabling CSI plugins. Uh, what item are we looking at? Sorry, I'm looking at number nine. Uh, Nineteen. 19. <laughs> okay, I'm. Yeah. Wrong one. Okay, no. never mind. I'll leave that to David. Go ahead, David. Wrong status. Sorry. Is David on the line? See okay, I can give a quick, quick update. update. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, at the face-to-face -face meeting, David did a uh, presentation of uh, the plan that he's been working on with Jan to migrate the entry volume plugins uh, to CSI. Uh, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of good feedback that he got from that. He's going to update uh, the design doc, which is currently in a Google doc. Uh, and he's going to prototype um, some of the ideas that he has laid out. And once uh, he's okay with that, he's going to put out a uh, community repo. Uh, he's going to move the design doc to the community repo for, for more feedback. Overall, this is uh, on track for this quarter. The goal for this quarter was to design, and uh, I think we've, uh, we're, we're completely on track for that. All right. Uh, next one, replace volume reconstruction with Kubelet checkpoint checkpoint.go. Uh, I don't believe there's been any progress on this. Um, it was a P2 nice to have for this quarter. Um, we can mark it as red and pick it up next quarter. Okay. Uh, move GC Cloud Provider Disk API to auto-generated code. Uh, so Chang, I think the Chang sent out a PR. I don't know if Chang is on the line. Uh, I forget what the current status of it is. I'm not sure if it got merged or not. 
but it's in progress. Um, I'll, we can sync up with Ching after after the meeting. Uh, CSI Cubelet device plugin integration. This was not started as of last status. Is this a not officially not started for? Uh, it is started. Um, Vlad's been doing a lot of the heavy lifting and uh, trying to get the conversation going. Um, he set up a meeting yesterday with me, Sergey, Luis, and a few other folks. Um, I think we are uh, comfortable with what the proposal is, and um, Vlad's going to help shepherd that PR towards getting merged. Uh, and then uh, Sergey is helping uh, work on the CSI integration for that. Um, so it started. Uh, it's probably still a little bit tight, but um, we'll see where it goes by Monday. All right. All right, next one, plan breakup of external storage repository. And I would say this is in progress. We had good progress at the face-to-face, -face, and now I just need to update the owner's file. This is on track. Uh, containerized kubelet issues and end-to-end -end testing. I have found a owner, I found a group to own this in the Red Hat, but I haven't nailed them down to actually owning it yet. So basically their manager said they don't it, but I, they haven't agreed to. So this is still in progress. Uh, host path volume reconstruction support. Subpath follow up. What number are you on? Sorry. 25. Oh, 25. Yeah. <clears throat> This is a, I, I just started working on this. I've reproduced the problem, but um, it didn't reproduce exactly the way I had expected. So I wanted to talk to Michelle after the meeting uh, again about this, but it, uh, it's in progress. Uh, could whoever is sharing the screen scroll down? Is that you, Brad, or is somebody else sharing the screen? Okay. I'm seeing like down to 24. I think it's frozen. Ah, that explains a lot. <laughs> Could you uh, stop sharing and re-share? Re Sorry, guys. Nobody tells me this. I thought I was just uh, <laughs> happily sharing along. Uh, let's see. Ah, there we go. Uh, host path volume reconstruction support item number 25 you said that was in progress and the yeah so I, I, I've reproduced the issue and uh, I'm gonna start working on the fix after talking to Michelle one more time all right is this something that can work be worked as a bug after work? yeah it's a bug okay Improved service account token volumes. Number 26. I have not looked at the status of that. Um, I need to take a look at it. I believe uh, the design got merged, but uh, I, I haven't followed up on it. Yep, the design is merged. Okay. Three days ago. Okay. Uh, provide environment variables expansion and sub path mount. You skipped over my iSCSI one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Delete iSCSI device on unmount. Yeah, so so this PR has been reviewed and it's uh, it's basically ready to go, but there was one remaining uh, big comment that I thought might be worthy of discussion here. I don't know if you want to do it now or in the section where we talk about PRs. Yes, let's add this to the section about PRs. All right. I, I put an item there, but it needs to be approved. I don't have edit access on the agenda. Okay, uh, number 28, line number 28, provide environment variable expansion and sub-pack. 
Yeah, so this one basically has been reviewed and I've gotten uh, most of the approvals. There is just one um, test infra change that needs to happen first before this can merge. Okay. And was who needs to review that, Michelle? So there was one me. More. Okay. okay. Then we have bring storage object and use protection feature to GA. I've seen I've seen some movement on this. I think just the docs remains for this. Has the uh, API been approved? The API changes. Yeah, the actual PR has has merged. Okay. So it's just a documentation PR that's left, and the other, the one other thing that's left is the one ten change. Okay. Um, I think we need. It seems like we're having trouble getting someone to approve the one ten change. So we need to to find someone. What is the one one change? It's the one to handle the downgrade case when you disable the feature. Yeah, that is a good point. This, that's not something that we do. So our users can never go back. <laughs> There's no back to the old version. So we we would like someone with experience with the upgrade downgrade to fully exercise it to approve it. I think. I think that's why we haven't had any approvals from our side. If that makes sense. You know, we, I know Pavel is, wasn't overly familiar with it, working on it, and wanted someone that knew the downgrade function to actually do the review. Sure. Um, I I will try to find someone on our side to approve it then. All right, uh, review E to E for storage. Ron, you had this here. You said that. Is this started? I mean, is it. Ron, are you on the call? So that's a no. I suspect that he's done some review for it, but I'd like him to officially sign off and see that he has. Okay, so there's our 111 items. Next up on the agenda, we had a face-to-face -face last week. I won't go over it in detail. There's uh, lots of recording and lots of notes, but the links here in the agenda, if anybody wants to review that, if there's questions, comments, or concerns, uh, feel free to add that to the next SIG meeting and we can talk about that, talk about them here for anybody that wasn't in attendance. Uh, next item we have design reviews. And Aaron, you list, you put cloning on here? You wanna talk about it? Yeah, so um, for the past five months, I've been working on a project called uh, container native virtualization, which is like the turducken of VMs and Kubernetes. Um, that's how I like to explain it. So it's running a VM inside a container inside Kubernetes. And my team was brought into that to kind of oversee the storage aspect of it. And some interesting tech has come out of it, but needs to kind of be contributed back into the community. Um, some of it's has started with the cinder cloning i'm not sure how many people have looked over it but there's what they're doing instead of what we've done with snapshotting where we're doing like a slow copy they're using whatever technology exists on that storage array to basically dedupe the storage and create a, a copy on the back end of a pv and this is done in the effort to take like a golden image of a of a vm have it saved in a persistent volume 
and then be able to copy that volume to instantiate another instance of a virtual machine. So that's the premise. Um, they are wanting to do a couple things that could possibly be problematic just based on our discussions with snapshotting. And one of that is the host assisted cloning. And that would, what they're attempting to do and would like to do is have a persistent volume in one namespace and be able to ha have some method, a controller, most likely be able to copy that PV contents into another, uh, basically reattach it to another PVC in a different namespace. And I know we can't do that today. So um, I don't know the best route by which we do this. If you want me to bring forward uh, the PRs that we have existing there today to discuss, but. Um, well, so what's, the, so what's the SIG storage chain? That if, if these are SIG storage features, we should run them through like the you know, planning and then, you know, the. I'm guessing that you'd want this as part of 112. So you'd probably want to create features for it against 112 and then you know add it to the planning spreadsheet to track. And well you want design documents with it. You know. Right. I, I I mean I guess I think they want to make sure they're doing things properly. And that's all goodness. Um, with things moving out of tree, I think we have less control out of how things are done. But certainly if it's a controller um, that is doing things like copying volumes across namespaces, I, I feel like the storage SIG should be in on that discussion and weigh in on, on that. So um, this in tree stuff or is it all out of tree? Well, That's an excellent question. Yeah, so this is, this is Adam. The, yeah. uh, the Cinder Provisioner is uh, over at the cloud pro OpenStack Cloud Provider repo. So there's a PR out for it there. Um, we have folks in the, with the Gluster Provisioner who want to implement the same uh, cloning annotation on PVCs. And, and I also spoke with uh, NetApp, and they're doing something exactly the same using a different annotation for Trident. So one of the things that we would want is an agreed upon standard annotation for this and maybe some sort of conventions around uh, what happens if a provisioner does or does not support an annotation, uh, as well as looking into CSI for how you might do something like this in CSI with maybe a different volume source type, which is another volume. Uh, so some of those things where, is where I think the touch points are with the SIG. Well, and I mean, ultimately, yeah, it's, it's out of tree, Brad, but I think they are methods by which other storage providers are going to want to utilize this, and it would be nice to contribute them back to the community, I guess is really my intent. So even if it's something that exists in an external provisioner, cloning, I think, is a very powerful uh, feature that should be made aware as part of the storage SIG. Are there security implications around cloning across namespaces in Kubernetes? Absolutely. Definitely. Yes, I mean, it, that's why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> that is the stickiest point of them so, all. So from the SIG's point of view, if you guys want to get a project as an official SIG project, that means it would live under one of our organizations, really, <coughs> Kubernetes-SIGs, uh, Kubernetes and we'd have a SIG storage dash your project name. Uh, if, I think it's too late probably to put in external storage I know there's some stuff there, but we're, you know, we're trying to get everything out of there. Uh, if it's, if there's a CSI touch point and you know, it's a CSI project, we have a Kubernetes dash CSI, you know, organization that can host CSI specific stuff. To me, it sounds like this stuff is being hosted already in Cinder or outside of kind of the, the cube sphere of influence. Uh, I mean, we can, we can definitely list it as a project and, you know, point to the external, you know, your external repository, but I don't think you guys are really subject to any of the processes in place or, you know, any of our cadence that you would be if you were in one of the official repositories. So I think, sorry, for me, like, I think one of the things where I think the SIG can benefit, I'm kind of imagining a wild west. SIG meetup. I forgot it's today. Uh, meeting. I forgot it's today. Can you please mute if you're not talking? 
I'm sorry, guys. Um, so I, th I think where the SIG can contribute here is that we have a bit of a wild west with all of the out of tree uh, storage plugins and provisioners. Everybody's using different annotations um, and also how you might hook uh, basically what I think you tend to want to do is have uh, a storage backend based smart cloning as I've been calling it with a uh, backup using host assisted cloning. So I think there is a bit of a, an ability to have an ecosystem around this, especially with security best practices. And one of the things that I'm hunting around for is in, a, in an out of tree world, how do we, um, how do we have that organization or kind of take away the anarchy there if there's a way to do that. Wouldn't some of the hook for this be in uh, the either uh, storage catalog or as an application on top of the framework? And this seems to me more like a, a service provided the framework is, is more so than like, a, you know, a I think that, that may well be true, but it sounds like there is enough overlap that it yeah. is in the interest of this work group to kind of be aware of what's going on. Right, like I'm, I, I'm aware of the process, Brad, and I appreciate you um, bringing that up, but I think it's in our best interest to come up with something that is consistent. I think Adam hit the nail on the head. I mean, it, everything moving out of tree, it's scary, and we've talked about how do we validate or certify, you know, plugins once they're in. I mean, we want to come forward with a design that everyone can use. It'd be very useful. Um, and is secure because copying things across namespaces or copying PVs in general could get tricky. So I And I think the, out of the snapshots discussion, what we're uh, people want after that as a next step is migrating data around and being able to import and export um, volumes. That is uh, you know going to be a real challenge. Uh, we may not be able to get to that point, but um, this discussion kind of overlaps with that, and it's worth having the discussion rather than uh, not. Well, yeah, so, okay. so I, so I was just going to say quickly, that's a really great point because we have, that's another one of our features we were looking into that I brought up at uh, KubeCon was the, the import-export ideas as well, and, mm -hmm. I, and I think the same exact framework and rules apply because you can implement it as entirely an application, but maybe there's mm -hmm. value in a standard. Mm -hmm. Well, so to that point, I think it would be a little bit more obvious to the to SIG storage if this was incubated in, under one of the Kubernetes repositories. Or one of the I don't think we need to talk about where the code is going to live so much as um, maybe start the design discussions and things like that. Like, it's already been designed as far as I know. I mean, I think this is something is that that's case, out there. You know, so we have some stuff. We have code for CDI. Um, I have PRs for the cloning uh, that's actually been implemented in multiple provisioners. But so I think one of the things we recognize is we made a little mistake and we wanted to see if it could work. But now we really want to engage the community on a design that's proper. So, yeah. so I, I think like we're kind of putting the horse before the cart here. Like it makes sense to have code and prototype and things like that. But the first thing is always design. So it looks like what the next steps would be is for 112, put this officially on the spreadsheet. Um, let's start the process off. Let's get a design doc written and then use that to focus uh, further discussion about cloning, further discussion about import export. Um, see if there is uh, common things that can go into the core of Kubernetes or if everything is going to be external. And then once we've locked down the design, then we can talk about next steps about uh, if there are code artifacts, where they should be moved to or where they should uh, live. Um, so let's, let's start with there. Okay, and there'll probably be three things, and Adam mentioned CDI, that's our um, container data importer. Today it's specific to VMs, but it actually could be used as a method to import pre-seed PVs. Like if you wanted to back up a database onto a PV and start it in your namespace, for instance, mm -hmm. um, it could be a method for that. So it, there's definitely some useful tooling, I think, that we yeah. want to engage upon. I think there's probably going to be three different things that we'll propose. Yeah. Um, I think one thing that we've learned from the, uh, the NFS uh, recycling code that used to exist a long time ago is anytime we have uh, Kubernetes mucking with the data path, it can get very, very ugly. Uh, yes. So we'll have to make sure that we do this very thoughtfully. Yes, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to consider it because I think it's 
it's worth discussing. And, and I hope it doesn't diverge from, you know, current features, but I, I think it's useful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any last remarks or questions on that? Okay. Uh, next item we have on the agenda is Ben with uh, PR 63179. Ben, you want to? Uh, so, so this is the ISCSI deletion uh, change to to prevent data corruption in, a, in cases where I, LUNs get reused on the back end. Um, so when I was down there hacking on the, um, the ISCSI code, I didn't see any locks and I kind of assumed that some sort of locking was happening at a higher level to prevent any kind of race conditions with the ISCSI sessions because ISCSI login sessions are a shared resource across multiple PVs. So I was talking to some people about it last week and I understand now that there aren't any locks. Um, and so there's probably just race conditions around if you happen to do a detach of, of the last volume that's using a particular ISCSI session right around the same time you do an attach of a new one, there's the potential for them to race and for, for one of them to blow up. So I, I don't think my change makes this any worse. Um, and so we could just treat it as a separate issue and, and merge this fix and then deal with the races as a separate issue. Um, but if, if you wanted me to deal with the, uh, the races, there's a bunch of different approaches and I didn't know what sort of stylistically we prefer to do in Kubernetes as for dealing with race conditions. So I, I wrote up, um, you know, a couple of different options for, uh, for doing this. I, the options are written in the agenda document, Brad. Do you want to maybe go over them if we have some time uh, very briefly? Well, I, I wanted to ask just as a general approach what, what do you guys do in, for race conditions do, do you like to have locks in, in kubelet um do you try so to avoid uh, locks? Two, two different layers uh there is the core kubernetes volume layer where we uh work very hard to make sure that multiple operations are not started on the same volume um but we don't really do anything about uh within the same plugin having multiple volumes being mounted or unmounted at the same time. The assumption yeah, yeah. is that the plugin itself will take care of that. Okay. Um, so. And, and, and so mutex is in the plugin are not a big deal if that's the right way to approach it? If that would be okay. Uh, the challenge is, I mean, as far as the core Kubernetes code, code is concerned, the way it's uh, factored right now is that even if the mount or attach on any particular op operation hangs, um, the core code can continue to run without issue. So yes, it's okay, uh, but you'd have to do it very carefully to ensure that you don't have any deadlocks or anything like that. Okay, so so I'll outline the, the ideas that, that have been suggested so far. Okay. Um, Hum Humble in the PR actually suggested maybe we should just never log out of these sessions and let them leak. Um, <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would solve the problem, but uh, it, it could create a, a pretty significant resource leak over time. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, if we never log out of the ISCSI sessions, they're going to consume kernel memory. They're going to consume. Um, I think the challenge here might be the fact that uh, having a single lock object that you share across multiple uh, attach, detach, or mount, unmount operations is probably going to be the most challenging part. But I believe there is the plugin uh, interface level object that you could theoretically put things in, and it's initialized once per plugin uh, and so theoretically you could put a locking mechanism there and then that would allow you to coordinate between different operations that the plugin is doing but I haven't looked at that code recently so I might be misremembering. Uh, Wamin uh, Chen has the most background I think on iSCSI plugin. Wamin do you have any uh, comments or suggestions? Yeah I think in this particular case uh, if I'm not mistaken, it uh, happens specifically to the multi-path ISCSI, and it seems to me it's a kernel issue. So it's it's not just multi-path. I mean, the 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 the, the login logout race uh, could happen even with a single path ISCSI LUN. Uh, if, if you have a shared ISCSI session across both LUNs. In that specific, I think we checked if the only we logouts when the last session is the last attach is finished so we did correct the, uh, but but, yeah. but but there's but there's no lock around that so if that code is executing right around the same time another pv is trying to attach 
there's yep. a there's there's a window of time when you'll think that you'll think that it's the last one and you'll do a detach while the other one thinks it's already logged in and it won't try to log in and then it will blow up. <laughs> okay, I, in that specific case, I would think I think previously we had something down like same to thin there. So essentially, when you set up the volume and you tear down the volume, we have a mute a mutex to prevent the racing condition. We can do the same thing for SKC if that's the case. So, so if that's the way we want to go, I'm, I'm happy to put in code to do uh, mutexes. It would it'd be, have to be one mutex per iSCSI portal. Um, and so, so I will attach. I will comment on PR with the, the Cinder uh, mutex as an okay. example. We can follow that path and see if we, that's where we'll fix the issue. Okay, if, if that's what we want to do, I'm happy to code it up. Okay. Yeah, seems reasonable. Thanks for all taking a look at that, Ben. Sure. All right, back to you, Brad. Uh, that's it for our agenda. Anybody have last minute items they want to add or things they want to discuss? Going once, going twice. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good one. Yep. Bye. Later.